You guys good? Oh, we're, we're, we're good. I'm I'm good. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me know. Sorry. I'm so ready. <laughs> How long is this podcast supposed to be? Just so I can <laughs> me- mentally prepare. Yeah. A few hours. Okay. Yeah. Five, <laughs> hours. Five, Five hours. Six hours. Six okay, six that's hours. good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty short. Three hours, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was that long. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Hey guys, Medios here, back with another. Cloud9 forecast, and today we're joined by the jungle and top laner for Cloud9. What's up, guys? Hello. What's up? You want to do some quick introductions? Uh, I am the top laner for Cloud9, uh, <laughs> Fudge Cakey. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm Blower. I play jungle for C9. Wow, that's everything we've ever wanted to know. <laughs> cool. Um, so just tell me, how did you get your start with League? When did you guys start playing? Blabber, you go first. When I started playing, I, I started playing in the Preseason of season one, and I started playing because my brother introduced me to the game. Um, he was playing, and then uh, yeah, I kind of just played with him. That's honestly the only way I got in. But I was like nine at the time, so I didn't play that much. I played like maybe once a month, maybe at that time. You remember who your first champ was? Yeah, I was a master. You went trick for three years. Nice. It was a uh, fun. Just right click, do nothing. So nine years old. That's early. How about you, Fudge? Um, I was eleven. It was season three. Uh, when Zach had just came out, and I found out about it through a Minecraft video because I was a hardcore Minecraft player, and they talked about League of Legends. I was like, "Oh my god, let's play League of Legends!" And I played with my brother, and we split time. And then I played. I think I mained like Vayne, and then Riven, and Yasuo, and then Yi. See, Yi. holy Yi. Adult ego players over yeah. here. I was uh, G Snipes of 2013. All right. When did you start playing jungle? When I started playing jungle, um. Well, I played jungle when I first started because I was playing Master Yi, but um, I was always someone who really liked playing like the most OP character, the most OP role, um, or, and like it was just more fun to me when I felt like my character was stronger than the enemies. So uh, in season six, jungle was really OP, and then uh, I played jungle only in season six because I wanted to climb, and then that was like the first season I really played one role, I would say. Um, and then I, I had Challenger from Gold, I think, in one season. Not bad. Thank you. <laughs> and Fudge, how did you get started on top lane? Top lane, I actually started in season seven. I was a jungle main from like season four till six. And then played Fiora because Fiora looked really broken. And that was the first season I hit Challenger. And then I just played Fiora and Camille. Those champs were so OP with Fervor in season seven. Uh, I miss those days. Good times. Yeah, good times. I actually miss the old runes. Yeah, the old runes are fun. Uh, like, uh, runes are forger, so whatever to me. Yeah, I agree. All right. Anyway, how'd you get started with the whole pro thing? So when I hit Challenger for the first time, I made like I made like a couple f- uh, like friends that were in Challenger, um, and then I kind of just kept playing, and then Scouting Grounds came along in season seven, and then. Uh, I didn't really want to go pro. My parents really also weren't like that for me going pro because they were like, "No, you can finish high school. You know, like you should just go to school." They weren't like too sure about esports. Um, but then I just ended up going to scouting grounds. I didn't really want to go to scouting grounds. I would say, but like uh, just some of the other pros or like not pros but other challenger players, like kind of convinced me that I should go. And then who was, was it? Who convinced oh, you? Um, at the time, I was talking like Demonte Def. Definitely licorice, like Zazel, uh, and uh, they, they didn't really say too much. They were just like, might as well try it, you know. <laughs> and I was like, sure, I'll I'll try it. And then um, I just ended up going, and I really liked, really like liked it. And then um, yeah, I was just like, I want to be a pro. Like this is what I want to do. My parents didn't really trust me going to California by myself, so they sent my <laughs> brother with me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was like. I really like this environment, and this is what I want to do. So after that, C9 drafted me, and then my parents still wanted me to finish high school, so I finished high school, so I didn't play after C9 drafted me. Um, and then I guess they promoted me, like, right after I graduated. Cool. So your brother was here with you for scouting gowns? Scouting gowns, yeah, in 2017. Okay. How long was he here for? A week. I mean, he was here just with me. Like, we were here for oh, a week like for he- scouting gowns. Oh, like, like you left with them too? Yeah, yeah. Like okay. we, we, yeah, yeah. We, it's kind of was only like a one week event, and then we just came for a week, and then we we left. Okay. Yeah. And Cloud Nine, it's the only team you've played on. Cloud is the only team I've played on. Yes, since then. 
Nice. nice. Yeah, bro. What about you, Fudge? How did it all start? Um, <clears throat> I had social anxiety in school, so I hated school. Okay, fair. <laughs> uh, I dropped out when I was 15, and at that time I was fi- 15 with season 7 when I hit Challenger. And <clears throat> I was like, I, I do not want to do anything, but watching pro players, that looks pretty cool. I like watching pro play, and I like playing League of Legends. So then I got uh, Fantix, who is now Richard on FlyQuest, the coach. Um, was like one of the best players in OC at the time and he added me and we got into like a similar friend group on discord and then eventually asked me to play for his team in academy which he was making and then he joined mammoth in 2019 and then I played with mammoth then moved over in 2020 got scouted by c9 uh, for the academy team and slowly built my way up to LCS in 2021 which was a stressful year for my rookie year. but we made it here now. We're here. We out here in Los Angeles, baby. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you you had one of the biggest glow ups. I remember your first <laughs> LCS debut was was it like Malphite or something? I don't remember. I think I was playing like some dog champ. I remember. I just remember like the. Uh, you were playing. Lulu. It was the lock in tournament. You were playing was like, it Lulu. I mean, I wasn't like that. Wasn't the champ you played? But like you were playing a lot of Lulu and Malphite and like. Uh, I was like a those, saint. Those two you were playing, and <clears throat> then uh, you were also playing Aurelia mm-hmm. and Camille, and yeah, I think those are the champions. I remember playing Camille versus Someday and going down like 70 CS yeah. in the first like 15 minutes. Yeah, I remember at the time <laughs> like we were trying to trade like the Camille Jax matchup, uh-huh. and you were just losing both sides of Camille Jax, so then we had a, or Camille Renekton or something, I don't know, and then we just banned both, and then we played Aurelia Nar versus it. Uh, it Huni. No, Summit. It was some. No, not some. Not some. Alfari. Alfari. Yeah, oh, you yeah. played really nervous Alfari, and you like one v nine that game. I remember that one. And also, we had to play Lulu top. It was OP. Alfari. Oh, That's destroy. pretty good memory. Yeah, I don't remember that. Oh, honestly, Flabber, I heard you have a really good memory for league games. Uh, you're, you're like Magnus Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can remember <laughs> most of my games, and if I watched them, I probably can remember them. But I don't know if I like watched all of them. You know. Yeah, but all the ones that I've watched, I'm pretty sure I can like remember pretty well. Blabba loves going back on old games and then flaming his teammates that aren't there yes. anymore. Yes, <laughs> and yes. Then just saying how bad they to played. my new teammates specifically. Yeah, to his new teammates. Yes. Yeah, yeah, just let him know. It's like as soon as you're done here, I'm gonna say this about you. <laughs> cool. Um, I can't really ask you guys about how Cloud Nine compares to other teams because you've pretty much just been here. True. Um, but I can ask, how has it been like? You know, since you started on Cloud9, because I know you guys both started in the amateur scene, and now you're in LCS. And has it been pretty similar your whole time, or have you noticed any changes, or you know, how's that been? No worries. There's got the standards, obviously, for like an academy player versus the LCS player is a lot different. I remember an academy like they just didn't even care that much about like, oh, the players were late. It's fine, like, you know, whatever. Like, workout, you're slacking your workout. They're like, oh, it's okay. Like, I remember it was me and Inori in Academy in 2020, and we'd always just, like, completely slack at workout and do, like, nothing. And they wouldn't really care until, I mean, at some point they did, but when it got really bad. (laughs) But, like, as an LCS player, if you do that sort of stuff, you're just, like, flamed permanently. You just have, like, extremely high standard on, like, being really professional, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, like, the biggest difference from, like, going from Academy and then to, like, obviously now. From when I first started, you don't get to slack out. I don't. I don't get to like you know. You don't have like that. Ga- you can't be a gamer DJ. You know, <laughs> you can't be a gamer DJ when you're an LCS player. You can be a gamer DJ when you're an academy player, though. That's fine. Okay, okay. Bobby, I, he- I heard you're a bit of a workout slacker. <laughs> no, at least you, maybe no, you used to be. No? no, no, not not true. I'm not a workout. Okay, I slack a little bit in workout. It okay. depends on but the day. Just it mm. just depends, and also depends specifically on what we're doing. Okay. Like, sometimes I actually try pretty hard, and then sometimes I really struggle. Like, for example, with rowing and biking, Yeah. Um, if I go hard, I literally, like, feel like I can't function for the rest of the day. Yeah. So I have to, like, go easy. Otherwise, I feel like I can't function during scripts. That's a really good excuse. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I'm serious. And then... Uh, sometimes I just slack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, do, I don't <laughs> believe you. No, no, not true. Not Most true. Most of the time. I mean, we're gamers, dude. Like, not wants true. to work out. <laughs> I, I, I mean, apparently it's helpful, though. Yeah. Been, apparently. Hi, yeah, I, I, I didn't believe it, but. Since Hyde joined, he's been going really hard at the workouts. Really? Yeah. 
Is he like showing you guys up? Uh, I mean, he's just, I don't know. He's trying to like, he's, he's like trying to bulking, gain points you know? with he's, Jack yeah. by being really good at work out, I think. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you guys have played together for a while now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how long has it been since you this started, is, right? Fight? This is fourth year? Fourth year. This is fourth, fourth year. Fourth year now. We've played for three years and this is the start that, of the fourth year. Holy, that's like one of the longest duos probably in the LCS right now. I don't know for sure, but... I assume so. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I, I assume it's probably the longest. How, how's uh, that? You guys still getting along well? You guys beef often? <laughs> we don't We don't argue too much. Yeah, I, I usually don't argue with Fudge that much. I usually argue with my mid laners the most. Yeah. Like, if, since we played together for, like, what, three years? It's like, every time we switch mid laners, I always argue with the new mid laner. Mm-hmm. It's like, me versus the mid laner. Um, Dude, not, that, I, not that we don't get along, <laughs> yeah. or like that we don't like each other. It's just that, like... There's not really much to argue between me and Fudge. It's like, okay, we failed this top dive. Okay, do that better. Or it's like, put this ward for me here. It's like, you don't interact with top lane, like, nearly <laughs> as much, you know? top lane's weak and he doesn't give <laughs> a f- about me. Like, that's what he's saying. I mean, I think it's just like a personality I mean, thing. I yeah. think I just, like, am more agreeable than most mid laners. Where, like, mid- most mid laners just want to, like, fight for, like... The ego, I guess. Yeah. Well, more. you were a mid laner briefly. I was, but when I was a mid laner, I had like I was like low ego because I yeah. thought I was dog mm. mid lane. And mm. also, when Fudge was a mid laner, he didn't play like, like win lane champs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he played more like rise, like moving, not really like doing anything. Move yeah. Or yeah. like he play like quirky, like full <laughs> scaling, so you don't do anything anyways either. Um, yeah. Or or like Victor, like Victor can bully lane, but like mainly like Fudge when he was playing mid lane was playing to either scale or like. Support me, like he played like yeah, avoid lane, uh-huh. Soraka or something like yeah. Not actually, wasn't like, playing yeah. like crazy kill lanes, like no, yeah. Yeah. Once. We I never played like Nice and LeBlanc, for example, or anything yeah. like this. You know what I mean? We actually, not true. Did we? I played LeBlanc. I won the two not, LeBlanc not, games. Not least my two LeBlanc games in LCS, I won. I, just I, I don't think we played Lisa LeBlanc. Was it AP LeBlanc? Or? It was AP LeBlanc. Yeah, yeah. It was AP LeBlanc. Dude, that uh, that on hit LeBlanc is so gross. It's actually good top lane as well. I mean, it's not gross because it's bad. It's gross because it's just. Disgusting game. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I can't focus on that champs in the game. How would you guys describe the play style for C9 and how it's evolved over the years? Because I don't know if I don't really know how I would put a finger on the team. I know when I played against you guys, like I think I last played 2020, you guys were always the team that was like so annoying to jungle against because I felt like you're somehow you got your whole team to, to just jungle. <laughs> It, it felt like I was jungling against all of C9 when you'd play. It's like their mid laners warding my raptors. He's invading me at raptors. He's at my wolves. You know, how how would you describe your style now, and or maybe how it's changed over the years? Uh, I would say when we first started, like especially um, before Berserker joined, when Zone was AD, we were very heavy like jungle focused. It was mm-hmm. like we played through jungle. Jungle is kind of like not not the carry but like dictates the game right um the dictator yeah and like everyone everyone <laughs> <laughs> still is <laughs> everyone everyone plays for jungle yeah, yeah um especially because like i was playing with niski for a whole year yeah. and he like he really loves playing for jungle and also zven specifically like i would say really understands the game well outside of like his like individual play yeah. so um they really like helped me i would say like i got helped a lot in my first year um in 2020, just with all the help I got from my ball and winning lane every game, Niski playing for jungle, uh, I think, like, back then we played a lot more. And then I think once Berserker joined, uh, we, like, saw how, how, like, dominant he was, right? So it's been more, like, play for Berserker the last two years, I would say. Just, like, he he's, like, a hyper carry. We pick around him. Combined with the fact that Sven, when he was playing support, like, was a lot... I don't want to say a lot better, but he was just really good at Enchanters. And it was also Enchanter meta, so it was, like... A lot easier for us to like just draft around berserker i would yeah. say um and that's like kind of how it shifted more and like i don't know if i just just playing the same i'm role. just playing <laughs> <f-ing> top <laughs> lane, bro. Yeah, like, you should do the same thing for three years like i don't know what to tell you. Like, nothing's changed do you feel like you need a certain mindset to play top lane in competitive like you know pro league because to me it always seems like the role where it's like even in solo queue it's just the tough guy role you can't go there with a weak spirit because <laughs> you're just gonna <laughs> Be faced with so much different kinds of bullshit that you just have to deal with. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm down three levels this game. My lane's frozen. No one's coming to help me. Sucks, bro. Oh, I'm winning my lane. Oh, there's their bot lane. Everyone's here. I'm dead. Like, um, how's that been for you? I think it sort of depends on how your team plays. I think some top laners are like really, 
like Summit, for example, is like a very like aggressive like berserker style player where like you play for him and if you don't play for him he's going to int yeah and there's some top laners like sometimes that. he will still int even if you play for him i mean <laughs> occasionally but usually he would play really well yeah um and i think majority of top laners are like kind of the opposite where they're more so like you just play for your teammates and i think that's how you sort of just have to play top lane you you can't really play carry style the only carry style top lane in recent times that's like won and played well is zeus like, Zeus yep. is the only one that's, like, actually carried games as a top laner. Like, not by himself, but he's had the most impact on the game as a champion, like, consistently over multiple games. Yeah. And, I mean, he's just f***ing good. I, I don't know what to say. Like, he, there's not really many top laners like him that are able to actually carry games. Um, uh, but most top laners are just sort of like, yeah, we'll win 1v1, and then we'll use our 1v1 to then help our team. Yeah. win the game rather than like me carrying the game solo as a top player. it's not really a thing yeah in I, recent times I, i've seen that transition so many times where you know you have like an up-and-coming player from solo cure or whatever who plays all carries top mm -hmm. you see a lot of examples of some recent ones would be like you know sniper uh tenacity mm -hmm. and then they get into the pro scene they're like hold up like yeah it's not working anymore mm -hmm. I, I sniper's actually doing surprisingly well. Yeah, yeah so but, sniper's doing really well, yeah. So maybe he doesn't fall exactly into that, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, like I the, know what you're saying. The yeah. skill set from solo queue to pro play is so entirely different. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember where I was going with that. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the item changes this year? Has this a lot of people talk about this being like, you know, the year with the most changes we've seen in a while. Do you feel that way? Do you agree? Disagree? Like, what, what are your thoughts on everything? Uh, I mean, for me, like, I'm used to it just because, like, I feel like every year Riot changes jungle in some way for, I wouldn't say for no reason, but it just, they just feel like they I want wonder to, why. Yeah. No reason. <laughs> they feel like they want Actually, to change. I'm talking to two jungles they, right now. They, I'm 2v1. Yeah, <laughs> oh, they feel like they just want to change jungle and just like make it different. Yeah. Um, either they want to change can't respawn timers, the fact that crab spawns different timers or like the map or whatever. Um, they just want to change something and I'm just used to being changed all the time. So I don't really like mind, I would say, the changes I'm because I'm just used to it. But um I didn't like. I, I know a lot of people didn't like mythic items, but like for me, I didn't. I didn't like hate mythic items that yeah, much. Yeah. Like I didn't really like care. I wasn't like, oh no, mythic items. Like that's so. That's so cool. Game's fixed. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> <"It's> <laughs> ruining game. I was just like, okay. I mean, sure. Uh, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't care too much about it. I think the only thing that annoyed me at first was that the mid lane, like the the lane itself from the bushes, was so far, so it was like hurting my brain looking at Dude, mid lane because it was so far apart and I it took me time to like adjust to that. The 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 ganks where you try to come from like, you know, that path where you could show up between yeah. their turret. Next thing you know, I'm I'm walking through their tower, take like three turrets, I'm just like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know what that's about. That that is actually a big change. I feel like most pro players kind of like don't really care that much about the changes like a lot of like streamers and just like players in general like they play for like the enjoyment of the game but like pro players <laughs> just play to get the best uh, as they yeah. can at the game right yeah. all we're thinking about is how to optimize it so like we're not thinking about like oh is this fun or something yeah like you try to keep your we're opinions sort of just out like, of it yeah it's like w what it do doesn't do what do we do now yeah. you know like we're yeah. just trying to figure out the game um for me it's like obviously top lane is harder to gank um which i think for top most top laners they enjoy that like, I kind of enjoy that as well. It's more yeah. so, like, your lane focus, 1v1 focused, not as involved with, like, jungle is not as involved. Most top laners would complain about jungle. Um, I think grubs change it quite a bit. And also just the removal of some items, like Divine Sundra, just kind of guts a lot of bruises, I feel like. That item was stupid, Gore though. Drinker, I feel like. The Gore Drinker, that, right. that one, to me, Gore is, like, well. left the biggest hole. Yeah. Like, you're playing Jarvan or Renekton, you mm -hmm. go from being able to, like, get half your health back in a fight to just... Yeah. Sundered sky, like ooh, 100 HP. Like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I guess those were probably like the item, like removal, and then just the bush it does change the way top laners play a little bit. But I feel like it's, you know, it's just still the same game. I like grubs honestly as an addition. I think it adds some more fun, I guess, in the early game. Yeah. Um, although Herald was a thing, but it was a little bit later. So yeah, I like I like grubs a lot more than Herald, mainly just because I think that being able to take Herald when plates are up is like way too OP. Mm -hmm. Like, um. They were like trying to like change and stuff. Like I thought the mechanic where like if you get solo killed or like the jungler kills you, the fact that you can lose your whole tower and five plates yeah. to Herald just is just dumb. 
Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the whole game is just lost because you died one time, you know? Mm-hmm. At least for you, it's it's lost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. What do you think about level one invades? This is something that I have a strong opinion on, but I, I want to hear, like, you know, as a jungler, how do you feel about it? And, you know, Fudge, you can chime in too if you've got an opinion. Like, like with the new map or just overall? Just in general. It's still relevant in the new map, but, like, you know, uh, level, like, late invades, just, like... I mean, I, I, I like level one invades just because I feel like it forces you to think about it. Like, a lot of time laners just, like, go AFK in their lane or, like, they don't want to help, you know, and then it really either one f- the jungler or two, like, really, like, lets you abuse champs, like, let's say Zac, because, like, or Rek'Sai, like, they're really weak level one, right? Or, and then if they get killed three camps, they can just, you know, run around the map. Who cares if they can invade level three? Um, but it it lets you like really punish these junglers that are weak level one, I would say. And yeah. um I feel like if you weren't able to like invade level one, then you could always just pick something weak and you know, fight at level three, you know. Like there would be no real advantage level one for champs like Nidalee or Graves that, that can really like punish like I don't know, Xin Zhao or something, you know. And at level three you don't win anymore. So I feel like being able to like have an opportunity to actually punish is is good for some champions. I think my one opinion on level one, like, especially with buff stats, I feel like leashing for red side is just bad almost always now. Because if you're the weaker top laner, you have to run all the way around this huge ass wall. And it's so annoying to have that to. Wall is massive. Yes, the wall yeah. is so massive. Before you can just run through tribush, run into your lane, right? Oh, like, oh. just up. But now you have to go all the way around because they can fight you if you run through the left path. And yeah. that's like, you just can't leash on red side without, like, getting a lane disadvantage automatically now as a top laner. Um, which kind of sucks, I feel like. Yeah, I, I've. Th- that's one of those leftover things in the game that I, I definitely feel like they should change, like the whole dynamic between leashing for junglers. And yeah. I, I expect they will at some point, but they just haven't gotten around to yet. Because, you know, earlier, Blabber, you were mentioning how, like, you know, you're always arguing with your mid laner. And th- that was an interesting note because I've always felt the same way. Like, in my entirety of playing Pro League and watching Pro League, there's been very few mid and junglers that like actually get along really well just because <laughs> you know i mean i i don't think it's the player's fault i think it's just like the the friction between the roles is so engraved in the game especially stuff when you had to like you know give your blue buff to your mid all the time like hey man i'm gonna like get this thing down to one hp then yeah come over when it's convenient for you i'll just stand here taking it <laughs> come, come get my come get my buff and xp it's just like wow man like i'm the dog uh so there's always been like that inherent friction between the roles yeah i mean i would say like for me i've always been the closest with my millionaires like even though i change every year like my relationship with my millionaire has always been like the closest um mainly just because i feel like you spend the most time like talking to each other yeah. like you're arguing because you're talking to each other right like i'm not gonna be arguing with someone i'm not talking to and it's like as long as you're arguing and it's like you're getting conclusions or like you're just you both know you're trying to like improve then like it's not actually a bad thing and the reason there's the most arguments is mainly just because you have to make the most decisions together. Yeah. Like, I just can't argue with Fudge that much because we just aren't interacting in the game, like, that much, you know? Like, I wish I could argue with him more. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, there's nothing for us to, like, disagree on that often because we just aren't interacting. Whereas, like, I feel like I've always been, like, playing around with my mid laner yeah. more than I play around my other laners. Um, overall, not, like, always, but, like, overall, I would say in the last four years, I've definitely, like, spent more time playing with my mid laner, and that's just, like, you just don't always agree on what's best, you know, because, I mean, I think laners don't understand jungle very well, and also, I could understand... That's true. Yeah, I could also understand lanes better. As the laner, but, I will say a lot of junglers do not understand lane very well. I mean, it's, it's, it's totally true. It goes true. both ways. It goes both ways. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I could rant on that forever, man. Like, <laughs> I think lane, I think junglers actually understand lane, especially competitive junglers actually understand lane is better than laners understand jungle. Yes, I, I agree. Because I feel like I you kind of yeah. have to as a jungler, whereas as a laner, you can kind of like just also, let your jungler tell you where the jungler is and just like play the lane anyway. And uh, you yeah, I will say well. like mainly ADCs and mid laners have a really bad view of jungle. Compared oh, to like, dude. compared to like, top, I feel like top laner supports have a much better idea of jungle than, yeah, because the, yeah. they have to take the L's. I I think in competitive, it's like top jungle and support. If there's a team disadvantage, it's almost always going to be their problem, their yeah. burden, right? Yeah. Whereas mids, you can pretty much always wave clear. You're never going to get <laughs> like denied that hard. Eighty carries, like you're just the the one all the resources go to. So, yeah, it's true. I know I've had to have a lot of conversation with people about like. 
you know, Laners will be like, dude, it feels like their jungler's always here and you're never here. I'm like, bro, you see where I am the whole time, so you know I'm not there. Like, their jungler's not there just because you don't see him anywhere. Like, you, you, gotta, you gotta understand that. It's, uh... <laughs> Yeah. What's the jungle, man? Where's my jungler? Where's my jungler? <laughs> you gotta track the jungler better. Do you, you ever have to have arguments with teammates where, like, you're talking about a matchup? They're like, yeah, you know, it's I win this matchup with, jung- with jungle pressure. I'm like, oh, it's a good two v one lane. Okay. <laughs> oh, a good three v two matchup bot. Gotcha. <laughs> like, um, man, I don't think I like have those type of arguments, but it's like sometimes matchups get like really affected by a certain jungler. For example, like, um. I would say like Oriana as a champion is someone who like really thrives with a stronger jungler because Oriana mainly wins her 1v1. Mm-hmm. So you don't actually have to do anything for her. But if you win and you can just find the enemy jungler, then Oriana can most of the time just win her lane by herself, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of times she's afraid of getting ganked. But if you just are able to be a stronger jungler, then you can probably just match for her, I would say. But I never like... I haven't had too many arguments where it's like, uh, you can only win lane if I'm sitting right behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we haven't all been on C9 the whole time. <laughs> there is some, some teams function a little different. Um, what do you guys think about the, you know, live patch stuff going on with LCS this year? Do you Do you like it? Do you think... It's a good opportunity to like play new stuff, or does it seem like everyone would rather just play it safe? You're like, I don't know if this thing's good. I'm not gonna risk like hard inting a game over it. I, th- I think there's universe. there's different aspects to it. Like the live patch, like promotes playing new champions, <clears throat> and it promotes like innovative picks. But at the same time, because you have the pre-planned draft and more time to talk about the game, mm-hmm. so let's say I play it. Udia top for the first time in LCS and no one knew what it was, right? Or like Garen or some in a certain matchup. Uh, you can just play the 1v1 on stage right before you play it. So like that oh. aspect hurts and like level 1 cheeses, level 1 invades. You have so much time now to talk about these like picks that you weren't expecting in draft, mm. whereas before you'd have one minute before you also the game. Have, yeah. You also have your coach to tell you things too. Like your coach is there. So, so actually, like you I have this innovative, you have this innovative aspect of we're playing on the live patch. We have this new patch. We're gonna play the new picks and stuff. At the same time, you play these new picks. They aren't as effective because people are more prepared because you have way more time to think about it. You have way more yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So you even have I have time to play one v ones in a match yeah. I've never played in my entire life on stage with my mid laner. You can just one v one him. Dude, it's, wow, that's actually crazy. That, so you, like, if you don't know a matchup, you're like, oh, do I want like Bone playing in your second wind here? Like, yo, one v one. That's me, exactly me what happened. Yeah, you can do what that. happened with Jensen playing against Insanity. He ha- his Insanity locked in Zach mid, and then Jensen played Oriana versus Zach one v ones into Whipper mm. right before the game. So like this matchup that in, <laughs> Jensen would not have known at all, he all of a sudden kind of has an idea that, how to play, that, I, uh, which kind of sucks. That yeah, I, I kind of don't like yes. that. But that, uh, I, I never thought about that. If you're that the first angle. game, you get even more time. Like, if you really? play first, yeah, because you have more time to warm up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Interesting. I, I still think that's true, right? Like first, I think I you have like, a little bit more time, but it's, it's, it's not, not that too much. much it's not that much, but, like, I, f- I still feel like when we play first, I feel like I have way more time than when I'm playing second or third. Okay. Just, just because they don't rush you as much. You yeah. I mean? But I think that it's likely that Riot will change that, that you're not going to be able to 1v1 on stage. I, I think they should, personally, that you shouldn't be able to 1v1 like your, a certain matchup on stage or something like this. Yeah, because, that's, that's insane. Like, right like, before the game, like I feel like it just hurts. Like, like I'm just 1v1-ing JoJo whenever I can in every matchup I get top lane because like, it's just, why yeah. wouldn't I, you know? Yeah. It's, it's the best practice. Uh, I mean, I also moment. think it's just hard for LCS because like, <laughs> now when I watch LCS, I'm like, Man, this is so nice. Then I watch EO, I'm like, can these games transition any faster? Like, yeah. that's, that's literally, like, what I'm thinking. Um, so, like, and, and NA viewership wasn't doing good, you know? So, it's, like, any way to make people want to watch, I feel like, is what NA is Dude, I, I would be down with them speeding up even more, bro. Like, yeah. I, I want to just, like, I don't know if it was ever like this for you guys, but, like, legit, in the early days of LCS, scrims had literally no review between games. Like, you would finish Ooh. a game and you would just insta go next. Five mm-hmm. minutes and you're in the oh, next I game. I absolutely loved it. I, I would. Love I, I would. I, Blabber would not love that. Love He's full. That. Of I he that. literally I love can't that. like get get past. Like if 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 something happens in a game, he has to like have a twenty minute argument <laughs> no, with, no, with no, George. No, no, no. I mean, no, <laughs> I, I get what you say. I, dude, I've been part of. 
I've been part of some long ass reviews too, but like at some point, I I, I wish a team would try it. it. It's like it's hard though, right? Because you have to have like everyone agree on a we, schedule or we, whatnot. We've done it before. We've done it before. Like yeah. actually, uh, it happens a lot more at international events. Mm-hmm. For example, like when we were screaming BLG at MSI, they were I. I swear to God, they were not reviewing. Yeah, they weren't reviewing. Like, literally, but it makes sense because yeah. when they're playing against like, us, it's like, BLG, but like, like they weren't reviewing. <laughs> and, like I, I felt like they were like playing six in a row or five, whatever we were doing, and then just reviewing all the games afterwards. Dude, like, I think that's I, so I much better. I thought that was... Okay, I have no confirmation. I don't know what they're doing. But like they, we would finish the game. They would get in the lobby. One minute later, they'd tip R. <laughs> they'd be like, ready. Like, yeah. they were not reviewing at all. I think that's a thing in Korea. I'm pretty sure LS told me about that. that a lot of Korean teams doing that. Where they, dude, review, I, they review after. I, they just I, play games. I feel like that would make so much more sense, dude. If I was on a team, I would be pushing for that. It's like, in that way, I feel it, it seems like a bad game doesn't feel as bad, right? It's like, you know, you're in a scrim, some bullshit happens, and you're like, I'm about to get chewed out for 30 minutes in review about this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of takes you out of it a bit. I, mean, I, so far, I, I think it's just the depends on the mood of like, yeah. like that your team environment. Like, if your team environment is like, uh, let's say you have someone who's like, or the, the whole team environment is like, you can get past like ints, yeah. or like you guys are like laughing about it, or like whatever. Like, maybe that's not a good thing because you don't fix your problems, but like, it makes losing games a lot easier and you can just move on. Whereas, like, if you have, like, a really, like, serious team environment or, like, it's, like, um, every mistake is, like, the end of the world, you know, then, like, it's really hard to play back-to-back because people are still, like, you know, triggered from the game before. So it's not going to be easy for you to just go in the next game. They're, they're going to want to, like, talk about it, review it, be like, why are you inting? Like, focus up, you know? Is is that ever helpful? Like, I mean, there's pros and cons. There's yeah, pros yeah, and cons yeah. because, like, there's certain aspects of the game that you want to improve, and if you don't do it in the first game, the coach wants to talk to you about it in the second yeah. game, for the second game. And if you just yeah, play yeah. five games in a row and you're not thinking about it the whole day, the whole day is wasted. Yeah, key. I mean, if someone's yeah. just chaining, yeah, if or someone's whatever. just chaining, like making the same mistake, not working on something, not thinking about something, a certain aspect of yeah. whatever. I think there's pros and cons of both for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, moving on a little bit, what do you guys think about Smolder? Balanced? Not balanced? I think it's balanced, but maybe I just don't understand the laning phase, but it feels to me like the champion's weak enough in the early game until she gets her items, and I don't think the burn is that OP. Like, it's strong, for sure, but I don't think it's, like, super overtuned or anything like that, and I feel like it scales well enough to make up for the fact that its early game isn't super strong. Mm-hmm. So I think it's overall pretty well balanced, personally. Yeah, okay. I also think Smolder's pretty balanced. Uh, honestly, I just think that Balin is, like, very strong um in general so it's like champs like varus for example win lane and scale very well with on hit and smolder is just really weak early um so for smolder to get to like her point of like 225 a girl have i been misgendering uh, this I, whole maybe time? she's a maybe it's a guy <laughs> So, okay, I don't know, but either, either way, yeah. Either way, uh, <laughs> I think we've had this conversation. Yeah, I actually, that. I actually don't know. I don't remember. Um, but for Smolder to get like the two hundred twenty-five stacks, it really takes a while. So like, Smolder's not strong before then, like uh-huh. not really, you know. And I personally think this Essence River build isn't that great. Um, Have you seen that wild build like Shojin? Shojin yeah, I, mean, I also don't know if that build like. Good, but I I like it a bit more than the Estrogen build, but I just don't really know, yeah, because uh, I haven't played that much Smolder. I just feel like the Estrogen build, you're like you don't really spike spike on Essence Reaver. You're not really s- strong or anything. Like the only thing it helps is for you to get your stacks faster, but maybe that's like important for the champ. Yeah, I mean of course getting stacks fa- is important, right? But I just don't know how much faster you're getting stacks because you have Essence Reaver. Yeah. Um, one thing about that champ is it's all one shots waves. Yes, that they is need really to, yeah, they yeah. need that to reduce really its, okay. its damage to minions. That is like, really OP. It's so long range and it's one shots away. Like that makes it you you can never make a play on the opposite side of a ma- a, like the map. If yeah, yeah, any yeah, small like, bot lane, we can't dive bot. It's like ults. it's like he's rumbolting the whole. Wave. Yeah, it's like rumble yeah. ult. Yeah. So yeah. that aspect, I think they should like. And even the W damage. wave clear is kind of nuts. Yeah, 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 that yeah. range is. Insane. You can RW yeah. a whole wave, and if it's not cannon, I think every minion does. Yeah. Yeah. That. That is uh, except good. for maybe the melee is like one HP or something. Yeah, the melee is a low, but yeah. how's it been playing with JoJo? That's uh oh god. <laughs> he seems he seems like a fun guy. Uh, JoJo is he's a good teammate and he's like really receptive to feedback, but he's a big scrim inter. Like uh, <laughs> he ends and scrims a lot, and um, I think that's something he needs to work on. But uh-huh. uh, he is he is very good, and on days he doesn't like he plays well. Like some days he's like very good in scrims and he's like trying really hard and some days it's just like what the f- 
fuck is happening? Like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so he's just not consistent in screens, but I would say overall he's good and he's really easy to work with because he he's very receptive to feedback um, and like he's op- he's somewhat open minded. <laughs> By open minded, I mean he just copies what Chovy plays. Uh, that's um, so open minded. Yeah, that's but um, he'll try new things and it's nice because uh, Vega is someone who really likes like different or unique picks and yeah, uh, yeah like cooking up. Yeah, he likes cooking stuff and uh, Jojo's been like. I would say decently open to what Vegas had to say. Um, not a hundred percent, but it's not. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. Jojo does just yells, and I hate it. He just yells during scrims, and he he's sucks. super loud. He scream and he screams like, "Is this allowed? Is this allowed?" <laughs> Every single time the enemy t- the team is like on his screen, it's not even like the inting or anything. Honestly, he, he talks like me when I was like five years younger. That's Blabber funny. and Jojo yeah. are very similar. Yeah. They yell permanently. Yeah. Like, I put the volume down on I'm Discord not, to, like, 50%. I'm not as loud as him. I'm not as loud as I put as them him. both Anymore. to 50% Anymore. on Discord, yeah. no That's matter funny. what. And if I put them to 100%, like, normal volume, there's, yeah. there's you, no if, way I'm li- I'm thinking my own thoughts. If, and if people mm-hmm. listen to my columns from, like, 2018 or 19, I'm just, like, perm yelling. I'm, like, screaming everything. Like, now is, like, a little bit, like, less screaming than I used to do, but it's still, like, I'm just a loud person. Yeah. So... It's not bad. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it it can be a very bad thing. It can be a bad <laughs> <For> thing. <my laughs> <ears>. <laughs> True. True. Also, it's hard to hear Fudge because Fudge is naturally like a really quiet I just person. I talk in a normal yeah. tone. No, he's quiet. He he has a, he has a quiet voice, and Jojo has a really really loud voice, and then I also like, have a loud voice. So yeah, it's like hard for him sometimes. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Do you guys want to get into this split a little bit? Sure. I, sure. Yeah, I'm the. The outcome is not what many of us had expected. You know, most people look at you guys as the super team, and I, I haven't lost faith. Like, can you, tra- can you just say what today's date is real quick? I don't know what the date is. February 16th. Okay. Today's February 16th. <laughs> you guys are currently four and five. We're, we're in our two week break right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, results aren't what you guys probably hoped for. And, you know, don't worry. I got your back on the co streams, on the dive. I'm. I'm co- <laughs> co- copium defending you guys. Thank you. But let's hear from from your perspective. You know what what hasn't gone right. What's what problems have you run into? You know, just just let me hear your thoughts. Um. So actually, at the beginning, we were actually doing really poorly in scrims. Not really poorly, but like we were. So when we first started playing, we were winning, mm-hmm. and then after like week one, we just started like losing. Like in scrims, like after we went two zero, like even the week where we went one one, um, that week we didn't do very well in scrims, and we actually hadn't been for like two weeks. But recently we've been actually doing really well, um, comparatively at least to before. And um, I feel like our team play wasn't very good. We were kind of just winning with like individual skill, I guess I would say at the beginning, and then a lot. Of a lot of the teams kind of just leveled up and mm-hmm. they were playing well together and we were honestly not playing well together and also individually we, we just weren't playing that insane either and I felt like we at least compared to the competition got worse over like like week two and three and um, I felt like last week even though we went one and one and this week like I felt like we are improving a lot as a team and we're starting to win so it feels good but yeah, I I don't think we were actually like playing very well. I agree with yeah. that completely. I, I think like the first two weeks where we won are like went three one, right? I think those were like our worst scrims. Mm. Uh, so like to me, I didn't even feel like we. Sh- to me, I felt like the past week, for example, one, where we went one, like like Blabber said, I feel like our scrims are way better, our practice is way better, our gameplay is actually way better, and obviously like there's certain games where you like mistakes happen. Yeah. But overall, like over the sample size of whatever how many scrim games we played, uh, I felt like we're just way more cohesive and we actually play well better together. We aren't really good, don't get yeah. me wrong, but it's way better than the first couple of weeks. But there was a couple of games where our draft was dog. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, uh, in my yeah, opinion, yeah. they were. Well, horrible. okay, they weren't dog, but the condition we had to win the game relied on us playing extremely well, in my opinion. And we are not extremely good, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah, there were def- like we could have won a lot of those drafts. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But we also could have not been in that situation. So yeah. it was like both, you know. Like I don't really like blaming draft immediately after the game because it's like 
it, it's like code. Like you can win with anything. Like when, yeah, we, when, when, we, yeah. when we scrim against like T1 or Genji, we can't win with anything. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah I mean? exactly. So it's like you can win with any draft given to you as long as the draft is not like like literal grief, right? Yeah. Um. So I feel like you should always look at those games and be like, we could have done this better. And then afterwards, you can be like, so uh, this draft, guys, <laughs> you know, was this the best pick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the games were playing like Lucian. Melio and stuff like this. Those, yeah, I, I think, think two or three so games. So the the drafts that stood out to me as being pretty hard to play was like the Vein mid game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously it wasn't Vein's fault that the game right. was lost, yes. but there were some situations where I see Vein's pushing a side lane, and it's like thirty seconds per wave. He's like snail's pace uh, pushing. The Lilia game too. I think our draft was. Oh, that really Lilia, that Lilia game was the yeah. worst draft. It was, yeah. it was you, Nar Lilia versus. Yeah, like it was like Nar Lilia TL. Lucian Melio or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Th- there were two Lucian games there. In there was support yeah. win, like, first out of Mikhail's, and I was just like, can't do anything. Yeah. I, I still could... I played that game, like, trash, honestly. Like, we still could have played it better, but... Yeah. Even then... Like, I mean, it's always yeah. going to be that we could have played it better, we could have won. Yeah. But the reality is, is, like, we're not that much better than our opponents. We aren't even better, necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're playing drafts that require us to get ahead and play yep. without making mistakes. And um, a lot of the Lucian drafts, we were playing Lucian versus a tank top lane. And tank top lanes right now are pretty good because there's no, like, tank killers that are that good. Like Fiora, for example, Camille used to be quite good into tanks. There's not really, like, those sort of, like, damaged top laners. Recently, this, it's starting to become a little bit more like that with new meta, but um, they were playing Kas- into Cassante or Udia. I think it was into Fly and TL, and we're playing Lucian Melio. And, like, that wasn't necessarily the only the reason we lost the game, but it's, like, we're, put, we're putting a timer on our heads because the enemy ADC is going to kill our front line. We are not going to kill this enemy top laner. And he's just going to farm because the champions are broken and they can't lose lane. And he's yeah. going to become unkillable. And those sort of drafts, I, I really didn't feel like we were good enough to play. But at the same time, like, you have to be sort of good enough to play, like, those drafts to be able to, like, at least play internationally. Like, you have to play you have to play drafts that require, like, volatility uh, and stuff like that. But I, I, I just didn't think we were good enough at that time to even it play was, those drafts. It was also, like, hard for us to like, really understand, because, like, we thought it was good at the time, I would yeah, say, and yeah. it's, like, uh, how can I take a conclusion that, like, I feel like it's unfair on the, the draft itself when your bot lane gets, like, 2v2 killed of four course. times, right? Yeah. And then it's, like, this draft is bad, like, how, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like, for sure, you can look at the draft and be, like, it could be better and conceptually, but it's, like, you didn't even really play the draft. Yeah. Like, to even know, you know? Like, 100%. And, yeah, and, and, yeah, and a huge sure. part of it, too, is, like, the... The fans and whatever they don't see your scrims, and most yeah. most of the games you play as a pro team are scrims, right? Yeah. Like you'll play what is it twenty five ish scrims a week, and then you got two stage games. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's a you know vast minority of the games that actually people see. Mm-hmm. It's also like not that important in my opinion to have like the best best draft, but more so like what's been working for you in practice. Yeah, and like. Lucian Milio was working for us in practice that week, so we were like, we should just play it on stage, you know. Um, and not not much was working for us that week in practice. Yeah, so so cool. like it's like um of course you wanna like say you should do the most optimal draft or whatever, mm-hmm. like people might think is the most optimal draft, but like if you're not winning with something that's more optimal than like I guess like comfort or like yeah. what you think is good, it's like is it better to play that? I mean maybe. I mean it's just hard, you know? I mean it's it's always trying to like, you know, uh how do you separate like the scrim picks from the stage picks and whatnot? Yeah. All all that. Um, I guess my next question would be, has it felt like there's a, a void from not having Sven on the team? Because he's been on the team for a long time. You know, he played AD carry. He played support. I know you've said he's got, like, a a lot of knowledge about the game. I assume he was, like, a shot caller in the game. So has it been harder to play without him, or do you think um, this split's not really related? Uh, I would say the split's not really related. Okay. Um, I do think, like, Sven is someone, like, he actually elevates his teammates, for sure. Um, and he's also someone who, like, he calls out, like, a lot of, like, bullshit plays slash, like, or, like, just bullshit excuses, too. Like, if you're, like, inting, like, super hard, and you're just trying to make excuses for our inting, like, he just doesn't let this slide. He's, like, very, um, he just makes sure, like, the team's going the right direction, I would say. But honestly, Phil is like kind of like that too, a Vulcan. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of both like that. Uh, but I would say like this split is just, yeah, like we just haven't been playing that good. Um, 
like even individually, not yeah. not even like a, as a team. But as a team, obviously, you can we can play better, right? But individually, I think we just haven't been having like that good of a split. And um, yeah, I mean, I've never won without Sven, <laughs> uh, but I've also like played with him pretty much every split, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, this next one is actually for you, Blabber. There was a quote back in 2020 where you said you don't like being considered a coin flip player because, you know, that was kind of your reputation. Um, I, I don't think it was super deserved, but, you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it was. And then you're saying, you know, you want to focus on being more consistent. And from the outside, you know, it does seem like your play style has shifted a little bit into being more risk averse, like, you know, prioritizing, uh, like getting XP advantages on people, like farming really efficiently, playing super efficiently. Uh, is that something that you've done actively? Do you think it's just like the way the game has changed? Um, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I would say like I still take a lot of the same, like not the same, but like I would say I just take more calculator risk. Mm -hmm. um, I will say like those two weeks where we were like, where we were going 0-3 and I think 1-1, like, I was, I felt like I was playing really passive and that mm -hmm. was, like, uncharacteristically passive, I would say, uh, for myself and I just felt like those were just bad weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like, naturally, I just, I've been, I got better at understanding what's a good, like, risk and what's a bad risk and um, I would say, like, before I inted, like, way more, like, for just stupid reasons. Um, I, maybe I would have found more angles, but I, I had more, like, stupid ints, like, for example, flashing for crab uh, in 21. Had to. Yeah, ha I had to do that, you know? Um, but I think, like, overall, I've, I'm not, like, trying to not look for angles or, like, be aggressive or whatever, like, people may think. It's just, like, I'm just, I've always just been doing what I think is best. Yeah. And what I think is best might change over the years, you know? Um but for me, like, I'm always just, like, it really just comes down to, do I think this is the best thing I can do? Or is this the best play I can make? And regardless if it's bad or not, like, that's just what I think. And um, playing more, like, changes your perspective, I would say, yeah. on the game. And, uh, yeah, I don't think, like, for me, anything's changed. I just, I still have the same mindset just to do what I think is best. And it's good. sometimes that, that changes, you know? I think Blabba... From playing with him, I feel like Blab is a lot more aware of like how to win the game and what our win condition is in the game. And he's not going for like the plays that like he might see an angle, but he doesn't go for it because he doesn't feel like he needs to anymore. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. To win the game. Yeah. Uh, whereas before, like maybe he'd go for like a leasing kick when he doesn't need to engage, right? And e either we would one shot the ADC or it would look like a huge montage play, uh, like back then or whatever, or he wouldn't and lose the team fight because he's trying to kick when he doesn't need to. I think nowadays Blub is a lot more, like you said, calculated, and he actually understands like why what we need to win the game, um, which I think is way better personally. Um, and obviously, it just makes it look like when we're losing the game, it makes it look like he's not doing anything as much as he used to. But when we're winning the game, it's, it just looks like it's a steady free win because there's not as much coin flip. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like I mean that, that's totally fair. Yeah, that don't, that aren't required to win the game. That's how I feel at least. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know, when you watch, like, Gen G T1 play, that, like, mm -hmm. their games are pretty controlled for the yeah. most part. They're not just going for, like, super random all-ins mm -hmm. for no reason. I mean, I think it's it just, sense. like, it just depends on the character I'm playing, too. Yeah, It's, like, sure. when you're losing, like, I think it's not a bad thing to, like, int. Not, yeah. not int, but, like... <laughs> yeah, not, Moby not, Boots going not down mid lane. Not literally <laughs> int. To but, like, team a f***ing <laughs> lesson. But, like, <laughs> when you're losing, right? Like, like, it's not bad to look for the creative angles to get back yeah, in the game. Yeah. Because the game is, like... At that point, lost, right? Like, obviously, if you're down 2k gold, like, the game's not, in my opinion, like, like losing that hard, you know? Yeah. But, like, if you're down, like, 10k gold or, like, 7k gold, it's, like, you're going to lose this game. Yeah, you don't like, do something. It, it, like, it, none of your ganks yeah. are actually going to result in a yeah, kill. Yeah. Like, they have vision everywhere. You can't farm your yeah. camps like, at that point. It's like, like well. Like, your opponent, like, unless your opponents give you the game, mm -hmm. like we did versus 100 Thieves, <laughs> then, like, you have to do something creative. And in those situations, I think it's, it's still, like, good to do something and maybe it looks like you int and sometimes you're playing like Vi and you go 0-10 but it's like that's what she does <laughs> <laughs> might as well you know like otherwise yeah. you're just gonna lose and do nothing yeah 100% what are some of the difficulties you guys face as pro players like you know just daily life 
what have you. What are some things that the fans might not expect to be a challenge for a pro player? Mm, well, at least for me, I don't really have a lot of time alone because uh, I'm just with my team all day. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it kind of, you kind of like, I'm not used to like just being alone anymore. And like at night, I'm just like <laughs> in my own head and I'm like, oh, I'm actually I'm actually alone for once, you know, and it's, it's kind of different. I feel like as in our, te- in our team environment, especially this split, we're working on like, we have like a thing where we're trying to stay later till like 9 p.m. or like like we wake up at 9, we work out at 9, we usually leave around 9 or mm-hmm. 9.30, um, most of the players. And you can individually practice in your own room if you want to, but like it feels like you don't, I didn't really have as much time alone and I feel like I low-key liked that time, alone time after scrims um, to like just be in my own head um, without distraction and don't really have that that much to be honest with you. Yeah, makes sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, I would just say it's, like, it's hard to have, like, relationships outside of, like, your team. Uh, when you're, like, 18, 19, 20, 21, like, that's when you hang out with, like, your friends the most, I would say. Because mm-hmm. uh, you're not really working or anything. But, like, you spend all the time, all your time playing. You know, even in your off season, you're playing. And then it's, like, on your off day, you feel the need to play. Like, especially now, like, we're losing, right? So, like, I feel the need to to play even more like I'm a bit older now so like um I don't I wouldn't say I play as much as I did when I was 18 but I still like play a lot right and um over the years it's like you just spend so much time playing you don't like interact with I guess your friends and stuff outside of the game like that that much yeah yeah I mean a lot of sacrifices for sure yeah what sort of stuff do you guys do for fun outside of league I know there's not a lot of time for it but you got any like Things you like to go out and do? Any other games you like playing? How do you unwind? Well, we actually played pickleball as a team. That was fun. We did that a couple days ago. That was actually really fun. That was fun, yes. Um, going disco with my friends and shit post while I play ARAM. That's also pretty fun. True. Love some ARAM. <laughs> Sometimes I talk to my friends on Monday. That's our day off. Um, but usually I, like Monday, recently at least, the last like couple Mondays, I've been playing 12 games of Solo or 10, 10, 12 games of Solo on my Monday, so... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, right now I don't do anything. But like, no fun. Yeah, no fun. <laughs> no, no fun allowed, no fun mother It's not like, okay, we're tied with like my, my, my off day is like actually pretty simple. It's like I sleep way more because I'm depressed because we just got shot on the weekend. Okay. So I don't wake up until like, like I'm awake, but like, I'm like, you know, you're In awake, bed. but you're not actually awake. Yeah, yeah you, know, you don't want to get out of bed. And then it's like, and there's like 12 and then you're like, okay, I need to like stop being subhuman. Uh, like my season's still going on. Mm-hmm. And then you play like, for me, I play like 10 games of solo queue in a row. And then I go on Discord and I talk to my friends for a little bit and then I go to bed. <laughs> That's yep. the f- life, baby. Uh, I mean, that, that, those are the trade-offs. That's the price you pay. Yeah. You still play chess? Uh, I do sometimes. In yes. champion select, in draft. Yeah, sometimes. Well, in the scrims, you sometimes, like to play chess sometimes. sometimes, sometimes, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't play in champ select, but I'll play like in between like review and the next game. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's fair. I used to Sometimes play Slay the Spire in that gap. No, no, no. We 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 have this thing now where like we need to focus in champs like, but my teammates not Fudge actually, but uh, actually not f-ing either. So the other two do not focus a draft at all. And, Zuck and uh, Jojo Pin like to be but, but we're eighteen in, we're in, and nineteen. Instituting 19 a new, instituting no, I don't know. introducing introducing a new thing where we need to focus very hard in our scrim drafts. So nice. we'll be doing that. That's, that's good. crazy. We're focusing during practice. That, 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 that's, that, actually that's actually innovative. a good idea. No, uh, like, I mean, maybe I mean, this is like Korea is a little bit better than it. Maybe so. we should focus and practice. <laughs> that's good. All right. Uh, getting toward the end here. This one's just a generic question for each of you. What does success mean to you? Um, I mean, success for me is just. Seriously, honestly, I, like it just depends on how I feel, like like it's and and what I want, like like if I feel good, I don't know, I feel successful, uh, but but um, True. and if I feel good, I feel like I feel bad, I feel like I failed, I don't know, uh, but also well, maybe you feel like you failed, so you feel bad, and yeah, you feel I don't like know. you succeeded, so you feel yeah, good, or? yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but um, for me, like it's been my goal for a while now to I having like steps, it's like. Win LCS and then duel internationally. Those are like two steps. But yeah. like, for me, I've always wanted to like have a really good showing internationally for like 
not just for myself, but like also for NA. Like I really hate that like NA is always like shit on, you know, and memed on. And like I was actually really happy that energy like won, you know, and got top eight. Like I feel like that was really good for us. Yeah. Um, and I really just want like to to prove that like we can compete internationally. And um, to do that, I need to make the international tournament. So my first goal is always to, you know, win LCS. And then um, after that, I, I just want to have like a good performance as a team, like internationally. And I feel like if I show like a good performance internationally with my team, like then I, I don't know, I feel like we succeeded. And if I don't, I'm just reaching for that again the next year. And until I, yeah, feel like that, that I've achieved that. Yeah, totally makes sense. Solid goal. For me, I mean, I've played like dog shit the past international events. So my main thing, like I felt like in 2021 during MSI, maybe not so much Worlds, but MSI, I felt like I played decently well um, internationally. And then I felt like ever since maybe 2021 Worlds, I've just been playing really bad at every international event. And I feel like I just want to feel like I played well. Uh, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm at a good level where I'm not just like going into the game, loading into the game, feeling like I'm going to lose against every top laner that's inter- like that's Asian internationally, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's way harder. Do you think your performance comes down to like, is it just they're so much better than you're used to that you feel like you're in totally uncharted waters? Do you think it's a mental thing? You know, there's so a lot much of extra is, pressure. A lot of it is mental, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, I think I play way worse against players that I think are better than me. Um, okay. Just because it's like... You're just playing scared. Like I'm just making decisions that I wouldn't against the cert- against against fake god. I'm <laughs> making just the same lane, the same situation. They're playing better. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. like I'm making a way worse decision based off the nameplate. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very certain of it. I've noticed it because um, MSI last year, I was playing in a best of five against I think it was Gen G, uh, and it was the la- last game. And I was playing, that was when, like, uh, we lost the first two games, and I was playing, like, absolute dog the entire series. You solo killed him back and then the third game, I weird. stopped, like, giving a fuck if I'm gonna, like, int. And, like, I was just like, I've already fucking inted. I've already been playing, like, shit. Like, I might as well just go and, like, play and make decisions without being scared about inting. And then yeah. I played my best in that game than I did in any of, like, the other MSI games, in my opinion. I entered that whole series. Um, and when I was a rookie, I also feel like I played better because I wasn't scared about anything because everyone already expected me to int because I was the rookie. Yeah. So I wasn't scared, like, oh, if I int, people are going to flame me. Like, obviously, people are going to flame me because I'm already expected to. Like, people aren't even going to flame me. They're going to be like, oh, he's a rookie. Yeah. So, like, this, the, the expectation, I feel like, and the expectation of myself and, like, what's going to happen if I play bad kind of thing, I feel like has been making me play a lot worse internationally and that's what I feel like I need to work on the most like mentally um to help me like actually play better against international opponent yeah dude you saying that reminds me I remember I think it was like 2014 when I was at worlds um this was like the, the early days of like Leeson kick flashing mm-hmm. so I got like a kick flash at right. one point and I remember approaching it w- with that same mindset you had I was like damn like it seems like we're gonna lose this shit. like I want to at least make a cool play before we go out. Mm-hmm. And then that was sort of the mindset leading yeah. up to it. So if somehow you can, like, get in that mindset of just, mm-hmm. like, not giving a f- before you start playing, yeah. you know, it's like, I don't care what the result is. I'm just going to go out there and, like, put on a show. Like, I'm just going to show my best kind of mm-hmm. deal. Like, yeah. maybe that's what we need. Yeah. Much easier said than done, of course. Of course, yeah, of yeah, course. But, sure. but I agree with you on, on that min- mindset. Got some fan questions for both oh, of you guys. Lovely. I'm going to sit up for this one. <laughs> First one, <laughs> can Fudge bench a blabber? Uh, easily. Definitely. That's not, that's not even close. Uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know how much blabber is, like do you 105 guys know how, maybe? Th- fans don't know how much I weigh, but I weigh like 100 pounds. Really? Yeah. I could bench a blabber. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, uh, yeah, I think most people Fudge aside could bench me. I would oh, honestly be confident to say 95% of people Fudge aside could bench me. Can you bench a Fudge? <laughs> I can't even bench myself. Okay. <laughs> That's totally okay. Can you bench a 2021 fudge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's good. Um, so next question. Who's the most normal on the team? Normal? Like, oh. I, I, mean, I guess it's a little bit open for interpretation, but I, I would take it as, like, you know, if you're going out somewhere talking to non gamers, who's oh, going to be the say, most I would social? say fudge or Vulcan. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think Phil. I think Vulcan yeah. for yeah. sure. He, um, he actually like has interest to us. Like he actually reads, which is weird. And he like has <laughs> <Which is weird. laughs> Dude, fakeries. Did you guys see that list Faker put out of like his top? Books? Oh, he put he put out and like then, a, a book list. Yeah, he, I, I didn't read, I didn't read those books. I just started reading. I just started reading. Yeah, he plays. Uh, he has interest in, like soccer. He really likes playing soccer. Yeah. Um, plays chess too, like like me. Um, but yeah, he actually has like a lot of interest outside of league. I would say. Um, and he's still super focused. Like he still plays a lot. So, yeah, he's he's a very Cool. So he's a very normal, normal dude. Yeah, very normal. What, what, a, normal, normal. what a normal dude. Uh, next one. If you had to switch lanes permanently, who would be better slash mains? Oh, I guess like which one of you would be better at a permanent lane swap, and what would you play? I think well, I played is. mid lane. Yeah, so. I, 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 yeah, I, you kind of died. I, I think Fudge <laughs> would be better at lane swap because um, unless he was forced to lane swap to jungle. Oh yeah, that'd like, be different. Yeah. The thing is, like, I think jungle is too different. Like, he already has lane experience. So it's a lot easier for him to like go from his lane to like let's say mid lane, yeah, and just like still know the basic concept of like actual laning. Like I understand like how lanes will work and how push, but like I don't know like the intri- intricacies of like actually laning as well as like a laner. You know, dude, I feel like the early game lane is the hardest part. Yeah, like I've been on an off roll quest myself, so, and like. I swear, if you put me into a game at, like, level 6 when I'm not behind, I'll do fine. Yeah. But, like, that early game is so punishing <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing. It's like, oops, I'm, like, yeah. just completely out of the game. Waste the spell, waste the spell. Like, sometimes I think coming. I'm good at laning because I'll play solo queue, right? And my opponent will be, like, he'll be challenger, but he'll be really boosted. Like, he's in challenger, yeah. but he's really boosted, right? And, like, because I'm good at the game, if the person is bad at, like, laning, then I will be better than in the game. You know what I mean? Because, like, I'll actually know the mechanics of my character, and the island play a colleague, so I, I I know the mechanics of my character pretty well, mm-hmm. and then also um, I just understand the game probably better than the random solo queue person. So I'll be like, wow, I'm so good at mid lane, but that's just because they're so bad at laning. And then when yeah. I lane versus like an actual person who knows a lane, I feel like I'm just down 40, 50 CS. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, dude, there's something worse than off rolling and seeing like you're up against an LCS player like a one trick. You're just <laughs> like, well, this is gonna be rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you you would man a collie then? Uh, I would, if I swap roles, I would probably play mid lane, yes. Okay. Yes. I would also likely yeah. play mid lane. Yeah. I mean, if I mid lane perhaps chill, if I, man, perhaps if I swapped roles, I'm not sure if I will, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, the last fan question we have, what are your pet peeves about each other? We've already heard Blabber can be loud. Anything else? Any any beef you want to air out? Pet peeves? Honestly, Fudge doesn't do anything of this. That annoying. I'm just a, I'm just I'm just out of everyone's way, you know. I'm just the top lane. You know? I don't mm-hmm. know what to say. I, I don't do anything to. Yo, I got a TP. You guys need me. Yeah, I'm yeah, here yeah. with TP ready. <laughs> Be a blabber, blabber yells. Yeah, I'm very loud. Sometimes awesome. I'm stubborn. So. Like it's not even it's not even. I don't even give a f- you're stubborn. It's just like <laughs> sometimes like blabber is just yelling. Like it's not even in game. It's like in review. And like just like when he's talking about we're watching a league game on like the on the screen, he just starts yelling and yelling and yelling, and I just don't like yelling. I, I don't know what to say. It's just a lot I'm of very yelling. passionate about the game. I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate. passionate. passionate, passionate guy. About how dark that play was. Yeah. Oh, that Gragas sucks. The Gragas combo. Dude, you gonna bring back the Gragas? Your Gragas <clears throat> is so sick. Dude, I would love the Gragas, but it's not good right now. Yeah. I tried it actually. Rest it's in peace. Good. All right, well, uh, I think that that's it for our fan questions. You guys have been great guests. Thank you for joining Thank you. me. Amazing host. Thank you, Amelia. Um, be sure to go to the Cloud9 store and get a C9 jersey. Get my I got, jersey. I got a, I got a get jacket my, right now. You can get this one, too, I get think. My, get my jersey specifically. Thank you. Yep, get a fudge I had, jersey. I had to sign a fudge jersey today for Riot Australia. For Riot Australia, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It, they they wanted a fudge jersey because he's Australian. Specifically, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it makes quite a bit of sense. <laughs> yeah. I've not seen how the other ones have turned out. This one, you're gonna have to move forward, Bob. Let's go. Move your mic, maybe. Perhaps. Ready? Three. Is it on? Yeah. Three, two, one. I hope it works. I hope it works too. Yeah. Me oh, too. oh, it's stuck in good right now. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching this. What's this called? A free cast? It's about it's probably doing that. Cloud nine four cast. Okay, okay. Thanks guys for tuning in and watching this Cloud Nine forecast. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you guys want to see next. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below and we will make sure or we will try to answer them next time. <laughs>
Nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We did it, boys. Woo!